All right, so it's been just a little while, just a little while since my last upload, but in the time that I have been away, I've done quite a few things. I've sold my Vivo X100 Pro, which I still think is a good device, but I went ahead and sold mine because I do have the, uh, the 14 Ultra. And on top of that, I have been able to root and bootloader unlock my Xiaomi 14 Ultra. It was not easy. It took me like 120 days of pretty consistent trying. I think the reset time is like 12 a.m. Beijing time, which is 1 a.m. my time here, so it wasn't very convenient for me to keep trying. So yeah, quite the pain. In this video, I'm not gonna be going over how you can do the same thing to your device. I'm not the, uh, the kind of person, this is not my world, and yeah, I don't wanna be the reason that anyone accidentally bricks their device, so that's not gonna be what this video is about, but more so just like a normal person's experience like me, so I don't really have much knowledge with this stuff, so I'm hoping that I can kind of convey whether this would be worth it or not for you to even try. And a little side note, I think it's getting more and more difficult to unlock Xiaomi uh, device bootloaders, so that might be another thing to keep in mind. I've read a lot of, especially like the, uh, the China only versions, I don't think they even allow unlocking anymore if I read correctly. And it seems like Xiaomi wants to make it more and more difficult for the, uh, the international versions to be unlocked as well. So this Neoteric OS here is for the Xiaomi 14 Ultra specifically, and it essentially replaces Xiaomi's Hyper OS with a near stock Android experience with a few quality of life updates. I personally absolutely hated Hyper OS, and of course, like this, uh, as you'll see in the video, this isn't gonna be purely a kind of only pluses without any minuses kind of thing, but I hated Hyper OS so much that I think I'm probably willing to live with some of the negatives. So I'm gonna briefly touch on the kind of fluidity and performance of the ROM. I haven't had any issues so far, so there's not really much for me to comment on that. Not that Hyper OS was particularly slow or anything for me, but yeah, Neoteric has been super smooth, everything. I mean, I don't know, animations, animation speed, all that stuff, I don't know, that's not my thing, but I think it's great, and yeah, no problems on that end. Being quite similar to stock Android 15, it's gonna look really similar to what you'd get on kind of a newer Pixel. The lock screen and color design are basically what you've probably come to expect with Material U, except this one also has a few quality of life updates. Things like some of the previous gestures from Hyper OS and also being able to remove the little at a glance widget on the, uh, the Pixel homepage. And also some gestures like being able to double tap on the screen to both wake and sleep the device. Battery life for me has been quite good, even though I know the Xiaomi 14 Ultra has never necessarily been considered like top tier in terms of battery life. I never had particularly amazing battery life on Hyper OS, but likewise here, it's not gonna be amazing, but I do notice a little bit of an improvement. I don't know if that's just because less things are running in the background, maybe it's a little bit more efficient, there's a lot less bloat because it's, I mean, as close to stock Android basically as you can almost get. For my personal use, I usually end up getting around like four to six hours of screen on time, and that can really vary depending on what I'm doing, like what apps I'm running, how my connection is but I also rarely ever use my phone from 100 to zero. I really like to use the, uh, the battery kind of longevity features. So I'm often charging only to around 90%, and then I usually try and get my phone on a charger before it gets below 20. So I'm sure I could squeeze out a little bit of extra time if I was willing to push it a bit more. Basically, that is to say, if you're a power user, this ROM isn't gonna magically fix the battery issues of the 14 Ultra, but I do think it is solid, and I did personally find that it was a little bit of an improvement over Hyper OS. One cool thing is the, uh, the upkeeper of the mod did add in an update the ability to change what percentage you charge to on like a very granular basis, so if I wanna choose to only charge to 87%, I can do that. Being that, like I said, I'm not super familiar in the world of, I don't know, I don't even know what you call this, basically custom ROMs and modding and things like that. I was a little bit nervous about compatibility with some apps like banking and whatnot, but I can say from my use, I've used both Japanese and US based banking apps and I haven't had any issues so far. Though I was trying to install the ChatGPT app on my phone and I got an error with, I think it was like a Google Play uh, authenticity or integrity issue or something like that. I'm not sure if that's due to the ROM itself or some other issue, but yeah. I'm not gonna say that every app will work no matter what, but I've had pretty good success so far. And once again, big shout out to the guy running this. I believe his name is Akash, but the fact that we're still getting, I'm pretty sure almost monthly updates, it's pretty good. Uh, big shout out to that guy, because I don't think he really gets paid to do it. I think it's strictly just a community that's really into this stuff, and he just puts his own time into it. So yeah, really cool to see that. 
being that my device is now bootloader unlocked and rooted, I have some options that weren't previously available to me. John the Farmer is a pretty prominent modder in the Xiaomi community, and I have a couple of his mods, including a thermal mod and also a brightness mod. The thermal mod helps with um, making sure that my device doesn't auto shut off too soon. It basically, I guess, allows the thermals to get a bit warmer before it uh, decides to shut itself off. I've been using it for months and I have yet to cook my device as far as I'm aware, so yes, that one's a plus for me. The other one, the auto brightness, it just allows me to increase the brightness of my device on my own with the slider. So yeah, this just allows me to have a little bit brighter screen when I'm outside whenever I want to. He also created... This pigeon just fell off the stairs. He also created... He also created some quick tiles which allow for things like DCG, which is dual conversion gain, which basically allows the phone to, when you're recording video, to take two separate exposures, one really high and one really low, and combine them together, basically helping to reduce noise and essentially, ideally, get a cleaner overall image. That and other tiles, such as being able to use 4K 120 frames per second in apps like Motion Cam. But yes, I would show them off a little bit more, but it seems that in my recent update, I seem to have broken them somehow. I'm sure it's user error and I just need to figure out uh, what I did wrong and get it figured out again. But yeah, this brings me into kind of a negative and especially from someone with my point of view, and that is that things seem to break fairly often for me. And a lot of these things might really be super easy fixes and I'm just not aware of it. But yeah, that's just something to keep in mind if you are considering even trying this. With one of my more recent updates, I dirty flashed, which I think to explain it is essentially like any other manufacturer just pushing an update to you, you install it and you don't lose your data. That is essentially what I believe the, uh, the dirty flash can be explained as. And so I did that and it ended up breaking my fingerprint sensor. And so in order to fix that one, I had to wipe my device clean and start fresh. And while it did fix everything, my fingerprint sensor is now super quick and really good. If you're like me, you probably don't want to have to wipe your device every time something goes wrong. So keep that in mind. If things start to break, you might have to, uh, you might have to offload your data and go through all of the pain of, yeah, wiping it and restarting from zero. Another negative, kind of speaking back on those quick tiles, is the fact that we can't really use the variable aperture the same as before on HyperOS. John the Farmer again made quick tiles in order to be able to adjust the aperture a little bit. So you have your little tiles at the top and you can select which one, but you no longer get the granular control that you used to have on HyperOS. So usually what would happen if mine were working, you would just select one and then you would have to probably restart whatever camera app you're using because it kind of hard resets the app and it will crash on its own. So you're pretty limited in what apertures you can select, just f1.6, 2.8, 3.2, and four. And I find that if you don't have any of those selected, the phone itself will just default to f2. But yeah, so that was, I mean, it's one of the big selling features, right, of the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. And if you follow this route of doing a custom ROM, it's likely just not going to, it's either not going to work or it's gonna be a lot less fluid, like I explained here. Another really, really big negative for me is that the, the little attachable photo kit doesn't really work without Hyper OS. The shutter button will take a photo within the photo app and the zoom rocker will work. But for example, I can't quick launch the camera app using uh, the press and hold from like the lock screen or something. And it will occasionally just crash the entire device in my experience. And then also the zoom rocker, it only, it only increases or decreases the zoom by 0.1 per rock, which is, I mean, basically it's not worth using in my opinion. So yeah, pretty sad about that. It's a pretty big negative for me, but just something that I have to live with if I decide I'm gonna keep using Neoteric. I will say though that the native camera app does work quite well within Neoteric. Minus, I think, what was it, like the movie mode, I think doesn't work at all. But in terms of like the normal photo mode, video, all of that seems to be working quite well. But yeah, apologies if this was kind of all over the place. Uh, before I got this on my own phone, I was looking online for some content, just kind of showing off what the ROM looks like overall. So at the end of the video, I'm gonna be going through just basically some parts of the OS just to show off what it looks like and some of the options within it. So yeah, let's move on to uh, showing off some of Neoteric OS. If you leave, I'll need 
some time to get you off my mind We're too far intertwined I will miss calling you mine I forget all the time And pretend I am fine thanks to audio as well for helping to support the channel. If you've watched me for any amount of time, you'll notice that I do in fact tend to have some music going on in the background. And yeah, I get that from audio. So I've been using them long before they ever offered me affiliate. As a matter of fact, I've been a user of the lifetime plan. And that's one of the big reasons that I'm happy to have them supporting the channel is if you're like me, then you probably are getting pretty tired of having to pay like a billion subscriptions to be able to do anything these days. So yeah, they do offer normal like yearly subscriptions, but they do also offered the option for a lifetime plan. Another thing I really like is how easy it is to get access to my licensing because I've had some other, how can I say, like music providers on YouTube, 
not gonna call out any names, but falsely copyright claiming my videos because of songs. So it was super easy for me to go back in and download a PDF copy of my license and just send that on its way to get it all figured out. So yeah, if that's something you're interested in, I will leave the link in the description and maybe in a pinned comment down below. And I guess like if you hate music or something, probably don't click the link down below. But yeah, once again, thanks to audio and a huge thank you to all of you for watching and I will see you in the next video.